my life right now is not where I want it to be. It's not where God wants it to be, I don't think. This is important. This is so important. How we talk to ourselves, if it's opposite of what God says to us, like that can ruin so much of our life that God does not want to be ruined. Staying in your comfort zone is the like fast track to not having the life that you know is right for you. This video is gonna be so hard to edit, oh my goodness. I can tell you now, if I post this video, trust me, it was very hard to post. Hi, this is Katie. Today is part two of like fixing my life. Basically, uh, if you watched my last video, I was writing down a bunch of stuff. Let me get my notebook. I was writing down a bunch of stuff in this little notebook because I need to fix my life, basically. And I've been working on fixing my life for a while now, but it's not working. And so I need to do something different than what I've been doing, right? Because we can't do the same thing over and over expecting different results. And so I need to do different things. And so in my last video, I'm just gonna do a tiny recap of what I did in my last video, but I'll have it linked up here. Why am I forgetting what side it's on? This side, right? Anyway, I'll have it linked. But a tiny recap of that last video is that my life is just not, it's not right right now. I feel stuck. I don't think that I'm in the place God wants me to be in. And so I wanted to write things out so that I can go over them. And what I wanted to write out is what is my life right now? Who am I right now? Like honest, like personality traits about myself what life does God want for me? So biblical and also just specifically for me, what he has told me he wants for me and what is healthy for me and what kind of person has that life. Because again, like we cannot expect a different life if we are not also going to change our mindset and how we act and how we think, you know? And then the last thing that I wrote down at least so far is things in my life to get rid of. And I don't think I mentioned this in my last video, but some of the things that God wants for my life and some of the personality traits that are going to be beneficial for that life, I think that I already have. I think that I already have, you know, like a hardworking personality. I think that I'm responsible. You know, I think that I am trustworthy, certain things like that. And so I do think that I already have some of the traits that he wants me to have, but I want to not only focus on those more, but then add all the rest and then decrease or get rid of a lot of the traits and a lot of like the parts of my life that I don't think God wants for me. And I know that I've talked a lot about this before. And honestly, I know that these kind of videos are not for everyone. I know that they're not, but I really hope that whoever is seeing this video is either encouraged by this. I really, really, really want this to encourage you. You know, like I never share this kind of stuff just for like my own personal gain or anything like that. I share it in hopes to encourage you in hopes to let you know that there are other people struggling working on things and that you can work on your life. If you are in a spot that you do not like, that you do not think is right, that you don't think God wants for you, you can work on it. You can surrender the things to God that he needs to take care of and you can take action and change your mindset in all the other things that he wants you to take action on. It is possible. It is hard. It feels so impossible sometimes, but it's not impossible. It's actually possible because God says it's possible. Okay. So it's possible. Um, right now I'm in a really bad mood. I don't know if you can tell because I don't know like how my demeanor is on camera right now, but I'm in a really, really bad mood this morning. Is it morning still? No, it's 1.30. I'm in a bad mood this afternoon. Yesterday when I started this, I was in a little bit more of a hopeful mood, but this morning and this early afternoon, I have just been in a bad mood. But the thing about it is that I don't want to be the kind of person, and I fail at this, of course, sometimes, but I don't want to be the kind of person who lets my feelings dictate my actions, and I don't want to be the kind of person who lets my feelings really just dictate anything else in my life, because a lot of the times our feelings are wrong and they're not biblical. And yes, we might feel them, but what I mean by wrong is that I mean that they might not be from a logical place, they might not be from a biblical place, they might just be our brain trying to sabotage us. Self-sabotage is a real thing. And also, a lot of our emotions and our feelings and even our thoughts do not and maybe even should not I don't really like the word should but it's not best for us to act on them it's kind of similar like a really easy analogy on this is that sometimes you might miss your ex-boyfriend but that does not mean that you should reach out to him because maybe he cheated on you or maybe he just told you that he doesn't want to be with you and so just because you miss him does not mean that you should be with him oh I miss him so therefore I need to be with him no 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 that's a fake logical jump you know, all that you know from missing him is that you miss him. That's all. That's all you know from that, you know, but it is so common that we illogically jump to illogical conclusions because then it actually makes us think that what we're feeling is right, but it's not always right. But there are so many times that I'm like, I feel worthless and here's why. And I find all these examples 
of why I'm worthless. But you know what? They're usually fake. They're usually not exactly like if then causation kind of examples. They're more that I just want to prove myself right because that's what our brain wants to do. Our brain just wants to prove ourselves right. That's why it's so dangerous to only watch like one news source because it's usually, if we're only watching one, it's usually one that we already agree with. And so we're just getting the feedback that we already agree with. And so we're not actually thinking if anything could be different. We're not actually logically thinking or deep thinking, you know? And so I can talk about this stuff forever, but regardless, my life right now is not where I want it to be. It's not where God wants it to be, I don't think. And so I want to verbally talk about it. I need to pray about it continuously. And I want to write it out because not only does writing stuff out like with your actual hand, like not on a phone, but like actually writing stuff out, sometimes that helps with um, processing it. But also it's good for me at least because I can go back and read it because my memory is not great. So I can go back and read it. But yeah, I just, I'm upset this morning and I'm mad at certain things and you know and again it's so easy for us to take these emotions and think that we have to act on them or think that all the emotions mean is that the opposite's also not true and all this stuff and it's like no a lot of the times our emotions are actually just wrong and they're based on incorrect things we jump to incorrect conclusions based on things you know for example if we're taking like a dating I'm just using that as an example but if we're taking you know oh my boyfriend cheated on me blah 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 Again, just an example. That did not happen to me anytime recently, but just an example. You might think, oh, well, no, but I miss him, so I want to be with him. And I miss him, therefore, maybe I should forgive him. Or I miss him, therefore, that means I need to be with him. And it's like, no, because your feelings are very different than what God is telling you to do. Those are different. There's a bug. You're outside. Okay. I think that happened in my last video, too. There was like a bug, and I couldn't tell if it was inside or outside. Anyway so many times we want to follow our feelings and again it's generally only because we just want to prove ourselves right whether they're good feelings or bad or whatever but if they're good then that's different because if you think i am worthwhile then you can also find ways to prove that and that's what i mean where our emotions aren't actually logic because if i am convinced if i feel that i'm worthless i can find examples in my life to prove that right but if I feel or if I want to convince myself that I'm worthwhile, you know what I can do? I can also find examples in my life to prove that, which is what I'm getting at, that our feelings usually are not actually based on things. And if they are, my boyfriend cheated on me, therefore I'm worthless. If that's how you're seeing it, I wanna encourage you, maybe flip it around because that's not an actual reason. It makes sense of why our brains go that way. You know, it makes sense that that's why our brain thinks that, or that's why our heart feels that. It makes sense. My boyfriend cheated on me, so I feel worthless, okay? But feeling worthless does not mean that you are. I just wanna remind you, feeling something does not mean that it's actually a logical fact or a biblical fact. So I am worthless because my boyfriend cheated is different than I feel worthless. Just like saying you're a jerk and you're being a jerk are different, but also it's so difficult, but we can flip it. Nope, he made a mistake, had nothing to do with me, or maybe it did, but I still need to move on from it. I can learn from it. I can take away what I actually did wrong. I can understand what he did wrong and I can move on. But what someone else did to me does not dictate who I actually am. Only what God says about us is what dictates who we are. Am I good at this? No, I'm very actually bad at this, which is why I wanted to talk about it because I know that I'm bad at it. And I just kind of assume that that kind of means that probably other people are bad at it too. And so I'm in a really bad mood right now, but you know what? Instead of being angry and being mean right now, I want to spread love and tell you guys that you are incredible. You are so worthwhile. You are not worthless. You are not pointless. You are here for a reason because God wanted you to be here, okay? God wants you to be here. I want you to be here. And the thing about it is, all right, well, God wants us to be here. That is a biblical fact. The Bible is the only source for actual facts. So the Bible says God wants you to be here, that he created you in your mother's womb, that he loves you so much more than you can comprehend, that he loved you so much that he sent his only son to die a horrifically painful and embarrassing death to save you because we cannot save ourselves. Only Jesus can, okay? God loves us so much. So then when we feel things like unlovable and worthless, where's that coming from? That's coming from humans because humans sin and humans kind of suck sometimes. So whether it's coming from your own brain or it's coming from abuse or constant negativity from other people, if it's opposite of God, then it's not true. And so if you have feelings that are opposite of God, which again, I have a lot of them. I'm struggling with this literally as we speak. I have so many of them. It does not mean that God's wrong. It does not mean that we are the exception. And trust me, I've told myself that a million times. Well, I'm just the exception. 
God loves everyone else, but I'm just pointless. I've told myself that a million times. That does not mean that it's true though. You know what it does mean? It means that any of my worthless, pointless, unlovable feelings come from humans who make mistakes or come from myself who I'm a human who makes mistakes. And if it's opposite of what God says, it's not true. And so our job is to surrender it to God, to pray about it and to work on changing it because you are better than this, okay? And it's hard to say that to myself, but I can say it to you. You are incredible. You are amazing. You are so lovable. I love you so much. I love you so much. And so does God. Okay. And so if your life right now is at a place that you don't like it, there are things to surrender to God. And there are things that you need to do to change it. Maybe you need to let go of people in your life. Maybe you need to let go of a habit or an addiction. Maybe you need to change something. A lot of it's mindset. Some of it is also circumstantial, but a lot of it is mindset and our hearts. I'm, I'm very like, overwhelmed and in like a really bad mood, but I can almost kind of tell that it's a bad mood in the process of changing. Can you tell this mood that I'm in? That usually, at least the last few years, I would kind of try to hide from my YouTube videos because people like to make fun of me for it or bash me for it or talk negatively in the comments and then they talk negatively and fight with other people. And I don't like when people are mean to other people. And so I want to do as much as I can to spread love. And so as much as I'm in a miserable mood, I want to remind you that I love you and God loves you so much, like way more than we can comprehend. So like I said, my last video, I wrote some stuff down at a park today. I wanted to do a part two to that because I wrote stuff down for like an hour and a half, but I was nowhere near done. And so I want to spend another hour or two writing stuff down. And then also in today's video, I want to at least start and make like the base level of a plan for myself and I already have some ideas for that and I've already actually been implementing some of that already even though I didn't do this yet but I already kind of knew some of the changes that I've needed to make so anyway I've been talking for a long time that's what happens when I talk about important and serious things because this is important this is so important how we talk to ourselves if it's opposite of what God says to us like whew, that can ruin so much of our life that God does not want to be ruined like that joy that we find through Christ cannot be found fully if we are so negative to ourselves, you know? And God will love us anyway. It's not one of those you have to love yourself first. No, that's nonsense. God loves us no matter what. But he also does want to see us surrender this negativity to him and to work on it, you know? Because he just, he wants like really good stuff for us, which might not seem really good in the moment or even on earth, honestly, but maybe it's not just helping us. Maybe it's helping the greater good. You know, because our lives are not just for ourselves. They're for God and therefore they're for the greater good. So I'm going to write some more stuff down about my life, about what I don't like about my life, about what I want to change, about what I really think God wants me to change, about the kind of person he wants me to be and the goals that I have. And so I'm going to write some of that stuff down and I'm going to, I'm just in a, I'm in a mood. I'm in a mood. My snack for the day yesterday, it was cheese crackers and I ate all of them. Well, I ate most of them and then I ate the last few this morning. But my snack for today, because I think if you're doing something scary or big or important or a big change that's confusing or, or anything that's like intense, set yourself up as much as you can for success. So that's why I brought my notebook and my Bible and some cool pens and stuff, you know? And I also wanted to bring a snack because I'm gonna want a snack probably through this. And so I brought some LaCroix, obviously some pomplamousse. And then my little snack is that I brought some gluten-free Oreos. If you saw in, I think my video from last week, I mixed these together. So like I opened them up and I did half and half and it's so good. Okay, so I know I'm in a mood. I'm, I'm, I hope that this is still encouraging. I hope that you're still watching and I hope that this is still an encouraging video even though I am in a mood right now because I also wanna be a reminder that even when we're feeling low, we can still be kind and still help people. I fail all the time. I fail all the time. But the only thing that God wants us to do is love him, live for him, surrender to him and keep going. And sometimes the idea that we have to keep going is very difficult, but I'm here with you and God is here with you all the time. God loves you so much, so much. Okay, so I'm gonna open my window. It's a little warm in here. I'm gonna eat some Oreos and I'm gonna write down some more stuff about changing my life. And then I am going to make, my hair is stuck in my glasses. I'm gonna make some drastic changes in my life because I have to. I have been making some small changes here and there that some of them have helped, some haven't, but I need a drastic change in my life. And that's going to mean that I need to make some drastic changes in just my day to day, my, my habits, you know, all that kind of stuff. So if I seem a little, like this, it's because that's what I'm feeling right now. But again, we have to take our feelings with a grain of salt. I understand, feel them, I get it. Maybe figure out why you feel it. I get, I get it, I get it. 
but don't let it convince you of something that God is telling you is wrong. Don't let it convince you of something that's opposite of what God is saying. Don't let it convince you of something that is going to take your life in a spot that you know God does not want it to go and that you know is not healthy, okay? So if you need to feel your feelings, do it. If you even understand maybe why you had them, maybe you messed up and you're upset about it, I get that, okay? But pray about it and don't let it ruin your self-image, which I know is easier said than done, but, but please, please. I'm off of a main road, so it might be loud. Anyway, I need to open the windows, I'm sweating. I love you so much. I need to, to work on my life. I'm not doing great. I'm not doing great. I haven't been for a long time. Let's be real here. I haven't been for a very long time. So basically what, what this is, is I'm gonna read my Bible, I'm gonna pray, I'm gonna talk to God, and I'm gonna write out what is going on. And a lot of it, I won't figure out. Because God does not tell us every single specific thing, of course, because then we wouldn't have faith. But I do believe in taking the first step and trusting that God's gonna be there with you. But listening to him is the most important thing. So anyway, I'm overheating, my phone is overheating. I'm gonna go, I'll talk to you soon and, and let you know what I've written down. Hey guys, one thing that I just thought of, I've been writing, I had like six Oreos and I've been writing, I have my um, steering wheel desk on here. And one thing that I just thought of that I was like, oh, I need to share this immediately before I forget, is that when we make plans, when we write things out, when we make a to-do list, when we start writing out our goals, when we do all those things, when we plan for something, our brain, I don't know like all the psychology and science behind it, but our brain releases similar like happy chemicals as it does when we actually accomplish the goal or actually finish the to-do list or whatever. And the reason I'm saying that now is because sometimes we'll write out a plan. Here's the plan, how I'm gonna change my life. Here's all my goals for the next six months or whatever. And we will feel excited just from writing them down and just from planning them. But I need to remind you that again, we cannot always listen to our feelings. And so just because you have good feelings from writing them down does not mean that you're done. You have to actually keep going and actually work on them and actually take steps to accomplish your goals or your to-do list or whatever it is that you're writing down anything that you're planning, it is going to feel good to write it down. And so sometimes we're gonna to wanna to write it down and then we're gonna almost feel like we already accomplished it and then so we don't put any more work in. Don't do that. It's easy to, but don't do it, okay? Don't do it. You're gonna write it down and you're gonna feel good that you actually started something, but you gotta keep going. You gotta keep going, okay? We're not waiting for motivation. We're not doing any of that. We're doing what we know is right. We're gonna be productive. We are taking accountability and we're gonna do what we know is right. Okay, so don't just wait for the motivation. Don't just wait when it feels good. None of that. But so I was just writing some stuff down. Oh, because I started a new page also of how do I get the life that God wants for me? And some of these things overlap, but I was like, okay, I wrote down the life that God wants for me, at least partially, at least what I know right now and what I think right now. And then I wrote down what kind of person will have that life, what personality traits of that person. And then I'm like, you know what? I also want to write down how do I get that life? And again, at the end of this video, I'll read some of this to you, but at least for this one, you know, I wrote down surrender more and let go of control, which I have issues with. More fasting and prayer, I don't really do that. So it's something that like, I know I need to incorporate. Show up for myself, very important. Um, but the last one that I wrote down that made me think that I need to talk to you again right now is get out of your comfort zone. Okay, if you've been watching me for a while, how many times have I said, don't stay in your comfort zone? A million, two million, maybe? Staying in your comfort zone, is the like fast track to not having the life that you know is right for you. Our brains, how they're wired, our brains want to stay safe. They do not want to thrive. They don't want to do cool things. They don't want to reach your goals that are like really, really out there. They don't want to do that. Your brain just wants to stay the same because your brain has stayed alive through what you've already been doing. And your brain just is wired for survival, at least in this topic that we're talking about. Your brain is wired for survival. And so your brain does not want to get out of its comfort zone. And so that's why it's so hard to do it. But here's the thing. That's not the way to thrive, right? Our brains want to survive. They don't want to thrive. But we as humans and what God wants us to do, we have to push past that. And so that's why a lot of getting out of your comfort zone and stuff is so hard is because your brain literally does not want to. Your brain's like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm good here. I've been living here for however long I've been doing it and I'm surviving. So I'm just going to stay here. Thanks. 
it's comfortable. But you have to be like, nah, brain, sorry, we're actually gonna get out of our comfort zone. And obviously make sure that it's something that's right and healthy and that what God wants you to do and all that stuff. But getting out of our comfort zone is the only way that we can actually make changes. Because like I said before, we cannot do the same things and expect different results. And so therefore we have to change to expect changes. And therefore we have to get out of our comfort zone to do that. Because most changes that we can make are not gonna be in our comfort zone because generally if something's in our comfort zone, it means that we've already been doing it. So if we know that we need to make changes so that our life changes, that means we have to get out of our comfort zone because anything that's already in our comfort zone means it is comfortable and no change is actually gonna be in there. And so when I wrote that down, get out of your comfort zone, I love getting out of my comfort zone. I think it's so important and I've always done things that are like drastically different, you know? But I know for me that there are also, honestly, some things that I have stayed in my comfort zone about for a very long time. And one thing that I just had like, a, like an image when I wrote that, that down that I wanted to share of like I literally was like oh get out of your comfort zone yeah that's good and then I was like yeah but you really just want to go lie in bed right now and maybe you'll do it tomorrow here's the thing I know personally that I have been really good at not always doing that and at pushing through a lot of those thoughts I know that I have but here's the thing not a hundred percent not a hundred percent at all no there are so many times that I'm like oh that would be a good idea all right I'll do it tomorrow or oh I want to really do that all right I'll, I'll do it tomorrow but how many times do I talk about, no, just start now. And again, sometimes I do. So I'm not being a hypocrite about it. Sometimes I do. I'm like, oh, I gotta do this. So I'm gonna do it now. I've always been that kind of person. Like if I wanna get something done, I wanna do it now. Unless I have to wait for some reason, right? But there are some things, especially if they make me anxious or depressed, or I am depressed already, there are some things that I'll just put off. And usually it's healthy, good things for myself. So yeah, I'm just being honest. I, again, I know this video might seem all over the place. I don't know. I'm in like a real, like everything's changing kind of brain space. But again, I want this video and I really hope my last video too. I want these to encourage you because you're incredible. You are capable of this stuff. It is so hard and everyone's life and journey is going to look different, but that's between you and God and knowing what God wants for you. Because I know we can watch things online and it seems like everyone now is starting a business and everyone's working for themselves or everyone's climbing the corporate ladder or everyone is on this diet or everyone is buying this new trendy pair of jeans or whatever. It's like, no, if you wanna do that, cool. If God is telling you to do that, cool. But don't just do things because you see other people doing them. We have to know what's right for us to do and the only way that we can know how to do that is to surrender to God and listen to him. So getting to the comfort zone thing, yeah. Like, I don't think that I'm being a hypocrite when I'm saying this because there have been so many times in my life that I've gotten out of my comfort zone, so many times. But there have also, since I'm just a human, there have also been so many times, especially lately, when I haven't gotten out of my comfort zone. Some things lately I have just trust me like in like my personal life there have been things maybe I'll share some of those with you one day but honestly since I got sick with my esophagus disease and I think I've maybe shared this a couple times over the last couple months but ever since I got my esophagus disease two years ago my life has changed so drastically not only because I haven't traveled as much not only because I've been sick and sicker than I was, even though I, I was sick before that, but not only have I been sicker, so I've just been in more pain and I've had a stricter diet and all that kind of stuff, but honestly, I have been more scared. Not only of medical things, but just of everything. I have been way more cautious than I used to be. I used to, of course, like I've always had PTSD, so my fight or flight is always on. So I've always been very hyper aware of my surroundings, self-aware, all that kind of stuff. But since I got my EOE, I have just been so much more afraid and worried and nervous. And those are not traits that God wants us to have at all. The Bible literally says, do not worry. It doesn't say, nah, if you worry, it's okay. It literally says, don't worry. Don't be anxious. It says all these things and I'm doing it anyway. And like I said earlier, uh, my emotions are not true if they're opposite of what God says. This is hard to talk about. This is really hard stuff to talk about. It's hard. Life is hard for so many of us. Life feels so impossible sometimes. You know what we're not gonna do? We're not gonna give up. You know what we're gonna do? We're still gonna have joy through Christ. That's the only way to get that pure joy. Yeah, we can be happy when we have a good meal or we see something pretty or we start to date someone who's kind. We can be, we can feel that from other things, but that true joy is from Christ. And all he wants is for us to surrender. And my control issues and my past and my depression sometimes makes that difficult for me, but it's possible and we can do it together because I think that some of you might be in a similar spot where your life is just like, what is my life right now? Like, how did I get here? I'm 37 and I feel like I'm like 18 in terms of like 
Like, I feel like I'm just completely starting my life. But that happens to people. That happens to people in their 30s, 40s, 50s sometimes. You know, like, it happens where it's like you feel like you're, you have to restart. And I know some people are going to watch this and be like, you're being dramatic. Please remember I'm only telling you like 10%. And also please remember that I have mental illnesses, some of which I've never shared. But also, let's also work on being kinder to people. And especially if we're talking about strangers, we never actually know what's going on in a stranger's life at all. So why wouldn't we just show them love instead of making fun of them for having a hard time or talking down to them because they're having a difficult time trying to figure something out? Sometimes we have to be neutral and that's fine, but we can be kind too. You know, people always make excuses for bullies. Oh, well, you know, they're probably just having a hard time, so that's what I mean to you. You know what also though you can do is you can, you can it's possible to have a hard time and still spread love or just not say something mean. It's possible. Anyway, I also get nervous talking about this stuff because I know a lot of people, especially when they talk about being saved in their journey with Christ, it's this is all the stuff that, that God saved me from. And I definitely have some things that God saved me from. Absolutely. That again, maybe I'll share one day. That's, that's a lot of personal stuff that maybe I'll share one day. But you know what I'm doing? I'm sharing the process. And arguably sharing the process of something is a lot harder than sharing, this is how I used to be and this is who I am now. Because I'm not where I'm supposed to be yet. So I'm sharing the process, which is just harder because it kind of makes me feel like a failure and it kind of makes me feel like I'm not doing something right. This video is gonna be so hard to edit, oh my goodness. I can tell you now, if I post this video, trust me, it was very hard to post. But sometimes when I talk about this, I think it's important to share the process. I think sometimes it's great when people share the before and after, that's great. But I personally also think that sometimes it's good to see the process because you know what? If you're just watching someone's before and after, you might think, how'd they get there? Because I feel like I'm in the middle and I don't know how to get to where they are. And so I wanna share the middle because I wanna share this process because I want to hopefully help more. And sometimes when people share before and after, it's so helpful, absolutely. I've, I've been helped in that way. But I just hope that at least for this, the way I'm talking about it, I hope that it's helpful in some way because maybe you're in a similar spot. So please know, you guys know this, I do not share these things for sympathy or praise or any of that. I always like when you guys are kind, but that's not why I do it. And I know that the internet is full of people who only share things so that they can get praise and sympathy. And I promise you, that's not me. I hope that you trust me on that, that is not me. I only share this in hopes that it helps you. I just, I love you guys so much. And my life has been so hard. And if I can do anything to help even one of you have your life be a little bit easier, because I know so many people's lives are really hard. If I can help be a little bit calmer, lighter, anything, then that, that's what I want to do because I don't want anyone to ever feel like I feel, ever. And so if I can share this and it helps you in any way, that's, that's the only reason I'm doing it. It's the only reason that I'm doing it. That helps you in any way, helps you feel less alone, helps you pray more, helps you rely on God more, helps you learn something about yourself. That's why I'm doing this and I hope that you know that. And I'm not even sharing that to be like, oh, Katie's such a good person. No, that's not it, you know? Like, it's just not it. It's just, I just want you to know what's happening and I love you guys so much and God loves you so much and life is so hard and I know there are some people who've watched my videos where I talk about how hard my life is and they just want to make fun of me that's not a good way to go about life guys if you see someone who is obviously in pain and all you want to do is make fun of them I hope that you reevaluate yourself and sure there are some times that we think people are exaggerating or whatever but what is it gonna hurt if you just show them love or kindness or just neutral anything but what I wanna do is I wanna show love as much as I can. And I fail at it so much. I know that my life right now is not where it's supposed to be. I know it's not. And again, there's so many things happening that I haven't shared because they're personal or they involve other people. I like being vulnerable with you guys, but I do not want it to involve other people. And there are also just certain things that I don't wanna share because they're just, they're personal to me. So my phone overheated, like totally overheated, like said I couldn't even use it. And then it cooled down and then I've tried to film, but then it kept stopping. So I'm not really sure if it's gonna keep filming, I don't know. But I think all I was really saying was that my life is not where it's supposed to be and I can tell. And so like I need to make changes. I need to surrender and then I also need to make changes. And so is this lighting? <sighs> so it's three o'clock. I've been in my car for a few hours at this point. And I'm still not done, but here, here's another thing. Some things, especially if you're a creative, you might immediately know what I'm about to say, but there are a lot of times 
that there's no real finish line or real end point. Sometimes you just have to say, I'm done, you know? And I think that that might be something, you know, if you're a painter, oh, how many more little shadows do I need? You know, you have to just make a decision at some point, I'm done. That is the correct amount of shadows and done. Same with like music production. Same with editing my videos, you know? Like I could, if I wanted to edit my videos for like 14 hours, you know, like there's always little things that I could do, but knowing you, your brand, your style, whatever, like, you know, after a while of doing it, you learn like when your stopping point is. And so something like this, like I was saying before, sometimes we can feel so good from the planning aspect that we almost don't even really think that we need to actually go ahead and do the thing that we planned on doing. Sometimes we're like, oh, I planned it and that feels good enough. But so sometimes also we have like procrastination planning kind of thing, you know, it's like, oh, well, I'm not done planning it yet. So I can't take action yet because I'm not done planning. I'm not done planning. But sometimes in reality, you just have to say, uh, no, I just have to start now. You know, I might not be done, but sometimes you're never done. It's kind of like sometimes you're never ready. You just have to go do it. Sometimes you do need to be ready for something, sometimes. But sometimes it's a mental block and you don't actually have to, it's just an excuse. And so for this, are these lists totally done? Did they explain everything? No, of course not. But did I probably explain enough that I can start taking action? Yeah, I think so. I can always still continue to add to the lists, but I think I at least have enough written down that I can start writing out my goals and start taking action. So. I said some of this in my last video, but I will say some of like the newer things that I wrote down in this video. So what is my life right now is the first list. Um, I hope that, I hope that this video like is actually coming out okay. I don't know, okay. What is my life right now? I didn't add anything to this list today. This is all just from yesterday. Boring, a little lazy and selfish, a little bit. Some things I know about myself that some things I'm like really, really selfless and then other things I can be selfish. Disconnected, distracted and lost. I feel very lost. Who am I right now? I also only added one thing to this list. I'm a deep thinker, I'm hard on myself. I take responsibility possibly too much. And then one thing that I just added is sometimes I'm kind and other times I'm a jerk. What does God want for my life? I explained a lot of this yesterday, but I did add some things. So what do I really think that God wants for my life? I think he wants stability and more connection with Christians and a you know small group and church and stuff. I do think that he wants me to get married. I don't know when, I'm single, so I don't know when. And I think he wants me to help more people in different ways. Then what I wrote down today is in all caps, I wrote down peace, calm, and joy. And then I also wrote down safety and boundaries because sometimes I'm not good at boundaries. So what kind of person has that life? I wrote a lot of this yesterday. I think the kind of person who has the life that God wants for me, that stable life, you know, with like a good group of friends who's connected to church and who feels peace and calm, who has that life? What personality traits would lead me to have that life? Uh, she has faith and hope. She has personal responsibility. She's honest. And again, I do think that I already have some of these, but I just think that having more of these traits could potentially lead me to having that life that God wants me to have. She's honest, has integrity, she's positive and joyful and looks for the good in life. That one I'm a little, a little iffy about. She's virtuous, hardworking. I know that I'm hardworking. She's generous, responsible. She helps things run smoothly. She's loving, nurturing, trustworthy, strong, slow to anger. That's one I struggle with, honestly, in my personal life, sometimes I do. She's wise, she's kind, she's not idle, she's patient. So I also have a list of things to get rid of. I think some of the ones that I wrote down yesterday and talked about yesterday, you're watching this a few days later, but I just recorded that video yesterday. That's why I'm saying yesterday. So some of the things in my life to get rid of, hateful self-talk. I think critical is okay if it's honest and helpful, but not if I dwell on it. Ruminating thoughts, complaining, assuming things, control issues, that's one of my biggest ones, guilt. And then a couple other things I wrote down today are a lot of my mental health issues my OCD, my PTSD, my anxiety, worry, fear, my medical fear, and just in general, and my depression. I know that those things, it's a weird thing to say, I need to get rid of them, but I need to focus on them less and like not let them control me as much as they do, which again, depending on your relationship with Jesus, that might sound like a weird thing or something that's not possible, 
But I do think that is possible. The more I focus on Jesus, the less depressed I will get. I do believe that. And the more I focus on Jesus, the less my OCD will affect me and stuff like that. I do believe that. So it'll take a lot of focus and it'll still take a lot of work and a lot of surrender, but I think it's possible. So um, hold on one second. I don't want this to get overheated again. So hold on and then I'll tell you um, the last page that I wrote down and this is what I mostly wrote today. So hold on one second. I know this video is kind of all over the place, but that's also like where my mind is right now. Okay, so the last page, and this is what I mostly focused on today, is how do I get the life that God wants for me? So I know the kind of personality traits that I'm going to have to work on, the things I'm going to have to let go of, but how do I get that life? So the first thing that I wrote down is surrender. I need to surrender more. Like I said earlier, I definitely have some control issues. I need to surrender more and I need to focus on God more. I wrote, focus on him. Everything else is second to him. Make no decisions without him. And as much as, again, some of these things I'm already kind of doing, but some I'm not. And so I do know that Jesus is first in my life. But I also know that sometimes my control issues take over and then I get like, oh, I'll handle this or, oh, I'll figure this out or whatever, you know, but that's, that's not how this works. It's just not how it works. So I need to make sure that I'm really continuously focusing on him and let go of control. I wrote that down too. Fasting and prayer is, um, I think I know that I already said a couple of these earlier. Fasting and prayer is something that I definitely am going to start incorporating. And then yeah, good changes are coming, but before that I need to sacrifice. Before I was on Instagram and I saw someone say that on Instagram, good changes are coming, but before that you need to sacrifice. And when he said that, I was like, he was talking about God and it just like really clicked to me of like how much more that I need to sacrifice. And so again, that's probably gonna be another list that I'm gonna write down, but still something that I can start like today. And so I also wrote down, show up for myself, be honest, don't follow your feelings get out of your comfort zone like I talked about earlier and then I wrote down try one new hobby or activity a week and then also the last thing that I wrote down on here and again this is not a full list but this is at least to a spot where I know that I can start and that I can still keep adding to it but I still know that I can start but the last thing that I wrote down is schedule because as much as I love having a to-do list I don't schedule it out like hourly. Sometimes I'll schedule out daily or what I'm going to do that week or what I'm going to do every day that week, but I don't schedule it out hourly. And I'm just curious if that would be helpful for me. I'm not sure it might not, but again, it's something out of my comfort zone. It's something different to try because again, with how I'm living right now, my life is not working. And so there are going to be some little things and there's going to be some major things that I need to sometimes completely flip and do a 180 but sometimes just make a different decision and, and tackle them differently. And so one of the things is like, go for a few weeks and have a, an hourly schedule and see how that works out, you know? And so that's just one thing I'm gonna try. And so one of the other things that I'm gonna do is write out some goals, some professional goals and some personal goals. And I know some of the professional ones are ready. I really want to work on growing this channel. And if you like my channel and you wanna share it, on your Instagram or tell your friends or whatever, that would mean the world to me, it would help me so much. But I really wanna grow this channel because this is currently my job. And I would love, I would love to be able to keep this as my job. But right now, the amount that YouTube is paying me is barely enough to pay my immediate bills and to eat. And so if you can help share, you know, tell your friend or something that would mean the world to me. I am gonna get some merch out soon. It's not Katie Carney merch, but it's uh, like within my brand. I'm gonna get some t-shirts out soon. And then I just have a couple other things in mind that I'll share with you, you know, maybe in the next couple of months, but business things where essentially I want to be able to help you guys more, potentially in a more like private setting or a more personal setting, or just at least in a way that's a little bit different than YouTube, you know? And so those are some of my professional goals. Yes, I am thinking of getting a, another job because the money's tight right now, you know? So yeah. So anyway, and some personal goals. I mean, it's a lot of this. It's a lot of surrendering more to God and focusing just on God, you know, and focusing less on dating and focusing less on my struggles, you know, and just focusing more on God. And the more I focus on God, the more that he will handle everything else. So I will still put effort into those things. You guys know me, like I'll put effort into anything, but I need it to be led by God, absolutely. And I just think sometimes I try to take control and I try to lead when that's not, that's not my job. My job is to put action in and to, and to follow, but I just want to work on, you know, being the woman that I think God wants me to be. And so I'm going to walk outside for a minute and show you the park. And then I'm going to go, I have no clue how this video is going to come out. I have no clue 
how people are going to respond in the comments. Um, I hope that we can always be kind, but I'm sure someone's going to be like, Katie, you're, you're overthinking. No, I'm trying to figure my life out. If anyone ever tells you you're overthinking, but in reality you are figuring something out, don't listen to them. Overthinking is only when it's not actually helpful, you know, and it's just hurting you. But if you're actually just deeply thinking in a way that is going to be helpful for you, the greater good, you know, your relationship with Christ, then that's not overthinking. That's actually just deep thinking and that's a good thing. But anyway, let's go walk outside for a minute and I'll show you the beautiful water. I'm just at another park. Um, I've been here before. I've shown you this park several times, but we're still just going to go look at the water for a second. Beautiful day outside. Birds are happy. I kind of want to get into bird watching. Maybe that can be one of like the little hobbies or even just learning more about birds, you know? Cause like I'll see a bird and I'll be like, I don't know what kind of bird you are, like at all. <laughs> and Florida has so many. I mean, obviously a lot of places have so many, but Florida has like a bunch of like big white birds. I don't know if they're cranes or what. Again, I don't know anything about birds, but there's just so many flying around. I know that this was an intense video and I know that it was not for everyone. I know that, but I think I said earlier, I know this video is not for everyone, but I hope that who this video is for, I hope that it reached those people. You know, maybe you're just in a similar spot and I'm right here with you, but we can figure it out, you know? Okay, so where's the sun not in my face? There we go, okay. So I think I'm just gonna go. I just wanted this to be like a little just two video series. So I'm still gonna talk about this kind of stuff in my videos, but not like dedicated videos talking about it. I might just mention it in my vlogs here and there. And then if I make some drastic changes or something, I'll definitely let you know. If I make some small changes that are working, I'll let you know. And then I might end up having another dedicated video about this in a month or two, but at least for now, when I talk about it, it will be more incorporated in my vlogs. I know I said I wasn't really gonna have many sit down videos anymore that weren't like vlogs, like throughout the day hanging out with me, but these videos just, oh no, my hair, uh, that was in my mouth. Um, yeah, these videos are just like really important and I'm very, it's like lost in focus at the same time, kind of. But anyway, hi birdie. Um, yeah, okay, so I'm gonna go. Thank you so much for watching this. Like truly thank you. I really hope that you're subscribed. And yeah, I guess that's gonna be it. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that you have a wonderful day. I love you, Jesus loves you, and I'll talk to you later. Bye. It's always weird waving with my left hand. Is there a bug on my face? I love you guys, bye.